as with materials, having access to a good selection of well-constructed skies will save you a lot of time. So I've got this scene that I've already set up and what I'm going to do is uh, get rid of some of the things from this scene and simplify it just so that uh, it, it's a bit easier to make this video recording because uh, it, it, otherwise it's slowing things down with Camtasia and uh, and having such a complex scene. So I've got uh, an infinite plane for the ground, an infinite plane for the water and this terrain. I'm going to go into the library and load in one of the preset skies that you get with Bryce and uh, then we'll have a look at what's wrong with it and, and try and sort it out. So this is lazy afternoon which is in daytime and uh, I can criticize this sky freely because I made it. But I made it in my defense I'm going to say I made it for earlier versions of Bryce that didn't have such sophisticated lighting. So this approach uses some cheaty methods to create the illusion of ambient lighting. Perhaps the most obvious one is in this case is the haze. So the haze is providing us with depth information about the shape of this terrain and I can show you what a difference that makes just by turning this off. So if I hold alt key down and click on the haze there I can switch it off and now you can see all the detail in there that was just being provided by the haze. Dot def the, the direct light arriving from the sun is quite weak compared with the intensity of this material on the train. So I could probably do with a bit more direct light. And if we go into the Skylab to turn the intensity of the sun up, then you become aware of the next thing that's bad about this sky. The global intensity, and I'm just going to switch this uh, previewing option on here, uh, the global shadow intensity is set down at 80, which means that all light sources will let 20% of their light travel through solid objects. We don't want this. This was a cheaty way of creating ambience. So turn that up to 100 and then we'll adjust shadow intensity on a per light source basis. At the moment we've only got to concern ourselves with the sun which is looking a bit weak. So I shall turn this up to 250 so it's lighting the ground a bit more. It's still not lighting it tremendously brightly but uh, we're going to add more light to this in other ways so I'll leave it down at that. If I, if I turn the specular off, you can see that it's responsible for this bright highlight on the water. So I'll just leave that at 100. By resetting things or changing things, then you can get an impression about what they're providing in the scene. And we'll do that next with ambient and then sky down. So what is the ambient? This is the global ambient providing in this scene. What, what is it affecting? So I'm going to set it to red and then we can see what influence it's having. Okay, so it's in some way on this water material and I happen to know that it's a curvature response on the water material that's set to respond to the bump on the bump in the bump channel. So I'll just set that to fully white now and then drive that effect and then I'll switch this sky dome color which you can see is a dark blue, a gray blue to red and then we'll say that sky dome is a light, shines down from above doesn't cast shadows but does interact with bump so you might just get a bit of a hint of the the bump detail in the terrain there though it's very faint and it's not really an effect that we need now it can interact with other things and usually it uh, can actually light ambient the ambient channel without any ambient response in the material but that's by the by the effect is subtle and, and that's the way it should be used very carefully for setting skies up set it down to fully black so it's not having any influence in the scene what other things have we got? Well, if we're loading a HDRI image, we might want to add it to the sky or incorporate it in the sky in some way. And that means that these colors may come into play. Definitely the sun glow color. Okay, I want the sun in the scene just here. Hold the control and alt key down, left double click on the sun roller ball, and then I can left click on the sky with control and alt held down still, and then that repositions the sun into that position. If you want the moon then hold Control Alt and Shift down together and you get the moon instead. But we want the sun. So I can see the sun now. Uh, if I alter the sun colour it alters the colour of the light and you can see that it has an effect on the appearance of the sun as well. With the wide field of view you, the sun doesn't look round when it's off to one side so that's one reason why you might want to set the sun up to be bright enough as well as having the right colour of light so you can't see it as a distinct circle. That disguises it somewhat. The next effect, 
after the sun color itself is the sun glow which comes about that distance at this field of view and that control there the color swatch will affect that so if I set that now to red you can see which bits are being affected by sun glow and then after that you've got the sky color so if I use control Z to take us back to blue on that sky color there won't add to the HDRI image unless we specifically set that control and I'll show you that when we go to the HDRI the horizon color works with haze so if I've got haze this won't make any difference so if I set this to like a bright red oh I tell a lie it does affect some of the clouds as well <laughs> I forgot about that but it also it's more strongly shown on the on the haze uh, in this sort of region here so if I change that to green hello I missed the green that green then there's a there's a band there that you can just see sometimes depending on the light settings and also okay skies are complicated and also depending on whether we've got blend with sunset not sunset but blend with sun set and color perspective as well which features the haze settings and we don't need fog so lots of things to go at so instead of getting bogged down which I was in danger of doing there set that to fully black Alt key down, click on the clouds, get rid of that. Alt key down, click on the haze, get rid of that. Just have the sun in the sky and how things are set up very basically. We'll bring in our HDRI image and then we'll start adding things back in bit by bit and trying to fine tune them to suit the image. So image based lighting, use HDRI image, open. I'm going to bring in one of these of Horrors. It doesn't have a predominant light source in it. Maybe a bit where these clouds are bright just there, but it it's good for providing ambient in that it doesn't have the sun in it. If it's got the sun in it, the sun tends to dominate. So that's the handy thing about this particular HDRI image that Tara set up. And there's a great deal of variety in HDRI images. It's usually uh, with horrors, you, there's some previews that show you where the predominant light source is and tells you that in, in a little text document or tells you if it's not the case and things like the contrast ratio. But essentially, this one doesn't, which is handy for what we want. I'm going to use it as backdrop and add it to the sky so it gets added on top of the sun glow color. In this case, uh, you might have noticed there, but it was a bit quick, there's a use sky color option that adds the existing sky color in. I don't want to use that, I just want to mention it. Right, quality setting determines how many simulated light sources are generated from this HDR image. Okay, so what you've got is a 360 by 180 degree projection of an environment that horror is generated and the quality setting is the number of times it is sampled to generate a simulated light source so if we set this down at 16 16 light sources are created via an algorithm in the sky and their color and intensity is set by the values found in the HDRI image and they've got a tremendous range because it's uh, I think it's like 96 pixel bit pixel precision uh, so you can have a huge contrast ratio you can have light sources in there that are millions of times brighter than other light sources which is where you get a high dynamic range that's by the by there are other videos that cover this and Horo does it a lot better my concern is just getting it to look right so to speed up the rendering we can turn cast shadows off because we're only providing ambient light because we've loaded this in it's disabled the sun and because we've not got apply to light source checked we can adjust the intensity of the background as it appears independently of the effect which is the light that comes out of our simulated light sources specularity we don't really need so I'm going to get rid of that we'll look at that in other videos for this we'll keep things as simple as we can so I'll set this up at say 100 as a moment in gambit and because we've got no shadow casting on it, the effect of the light is rather flat if I turn that on uh, then what you would find it's not updated for some reason so we'll just go out of here and update it is it doesn't appear that bright because the terrain's casting shadows so you get uh, a good level of modeling from the HDRI light but at the cost of render time turn this off and it renders a lot faster but you still get the colored light from different directions in the sky so it's filling in some detail for us which is nice interacting with bump and all that kind of thing so because that's the effect we're going for we want some fairly efficient rendering then we'll just set this up for ambient light it's a bit bright at the moment so I'll set that down maybe um, 70 okay and the saturation is rather high rather blue so set the saturation of the light from the sky it don't affect the appearance of the sky down so I've tuned it down a bit so it's not as blue 
then um, the sky looks a bit bright there. We've got the option of the hold the control key down. You can roll this around the Y axis, so we can select uh, some different uh, cloud positions, for example. What might look nice, uh, but it's all looking a bit bright. So I set the intensity down, say to two, and see if that gives us a more natural blue color for the sky. Then slide our sun around to one side, and uh, you see the sun glow colors adding into that and giving us a, a light gradient there so that's nice re-enable the light source and then move it around so what we're aiming to get is the light grazing across the surface of this terrain in such a way that it tells us something about the shape of that terrain and then we'll give it a quick render so we've got a sort of a orangey light from the sun and then a bluey light providing our ambient light and you could probably get away with that being darker still and this being brighter still so that's easy enough go to Sun Moon and take that up a notch to 350 and then go to image based lighting and take this down a notch to 50 so I've got a higher contrast there but we've still got some uh, detail appearing in here which is what we want so long as there's a bit it works and that's good the other thing we can do is remember we can introduce some sort of depth illusion by the haze setting. Now it's very tricky to set the haze up right and quickly but we'll give it a go. So it's not looking too bad at the moment but so we'll engage our haze and see where we are with that. Okay that's completely swamped our scene. The colour of it is rather strong and I believe that's coming through blend with sun so we can set these down and it don't, doesn't the sun colour doesn't go into that that much then. It's still looking quite bright. But we've got the color of the haze itself set there and the luminance that's coming from the sun if we go alt and click on there you can see how our sun's set up so it is quite an orangey color really but that's fine because we've got the sun fairly low so the the light tends to be orangier right so we've got the density and thickness that we can alter here to change its appearance density is sort of the transition from where the haze starts to where it's fully dense and thickness uh, is something that's more of a linear ap approach so if you can imagine if you have narrow if you have a high density you have a, a transition that you're moving backwards and forwards I can show you that here we go with the thickness control so then it suddenly it, it appears whereas if you have the low density and uh, and then and then you can have the haze coming right up to the camera and gradually coming into place and that just uh, changes the effect really uh, overall so uh, with with high thickness and low densities you tend to to get a lot of haze right up to the camera so it reduces the contrast in your scene whereas the other way around you can get quite contrasty images but still have haze color perspective well you can either have that or not if it's not on the default it tends to be rather bluish if it is on then you can adjust the uh, color perspective so you have a, a less blue haze and um, the higher this gets it's the effect of increasing the density as well so you can go super dense should you so desire uh, let's uh, give this a whirl and see if we can get some settings where it's just interacting the if you've got a band like this is clearly the height of this is, is the the cliff edge is poking out the top you can adjust that by lifting the cloud height up even though the clouds aren't active you just lift the cloud height up oh the clouds have come active they do that sometimes it's not a problem alt key click on the cloud again and it deactivates them so you can see now I've lifted the haze but it's obliterated the HDR image for the backdrop but we are getting sort of the, this area getting more filled in with light that's added in from the haze it's just added on top of things so I'll we'll drop that a bit so we can see a bit of the sky in there and then it's gone so far back that it's not interacting with that so we, we might want a more gentle transition so do it the other way around and uh, so let's introduce that now that looks a bit bright there so we've got the option here to change the haze color and pick a color out of the sky from somewhere up here and you can see that the effect is it's quite a strong effect for even small changes so don't make it too dark otherwise it's going to look wrong and then we can lower that down so uh, it's quite a hazy day still really I, I, I want this haze to add something in but I don't want it to dominate the effect too much so we'll try lowering the thickness somewhat okay and um, we've still got 
some blue from the sky so I think that you know it's not looking too bad we've got uh, we've got some detail in here but it doesn't it's not obvious that there's no shadow casting you can turn shadow casting on but it just needs rebalancing the HDRI lighting and don't want to get into that too much because I wanted this to show you how to use it in a fairly efficient way in terms of render time and still get a decent effect and I think that that's where we are now so maybe some consideration because I took the shoreline effect away initially uh, perhaps I want to re uh, compose this scene so that we've got taken advantage of the sky instead which you know will make that a feature uh, Horror and I have got a free product in the dust store uh, the, the golden rules I think it's called so you can go and look for that and it gives you some help with compositions what I'm going to do is third rules so I'm going to position it so if I want to see where the horizon is I can turn that on with this control this wants to be about a third so a third of the scene is going to be ground up to the horizon and two-thirds sky and then if I arrange this point here where we've got the the, the uh, terrain coming in both for a third and then two-thirds there so we've got a big empty space but that doesn't matter it, it'll work with the composition we should do anyway in theory turn the horizon back off now so we can see what we're doing so we can make the the feature the clouds now if we rotate the HDR image it will modify the lighting slightly but as if, if this is in the middle maybe I'd like this to be uh, here again third so we'll, we'll try and creep that around to the right work out the right way the other right there you go you can see there's another gradient coming in on the sky that's part of the HDR image uh, so that's on that third mark there and that's in the upper third of the sky and we've got the Sun there which I might move around a little bit further I don't know it depends you see it's gonna modify the lighting if I do that or if I want to make that a bit darker I could just lower the Sun glow a bit so that's taking that intensity off there so now I would say we're more or less done when you've got your sky set up you can save it into the library just be aware that uh, don't fill too many of your library slots up with large high resolution HDR images because they have a large memory footprint and the files if they exceed two gigabytes will cause it to crash and you will recover none of your skies at that point it's corrupted so just add more categories and then save in there uh, you can check on the size of the files if you've got the uh, the FAQ PDF that Horrors made uh, which I recommend you're looking at you'll know where all the files are stored I'll try and remember to put a put a copy of that or a link as appropriate so you can have a look at that it's uh, excellent information uh, remember you to if you want interested in compositional things then look for the golden rules in the store it won't cost you anything so feel free to download that product and uh, there's some helpful tutorials in there if uh, if that's what you're looking for or there's just files that uh, and, a, and a few guides to help you set your compositions up and and otherwise have fun using Bryce and experimenting with HDR images which uh, which is what I generally do so there you go hope you found that useful and interesting and that you'll uh, you'll use these techniques in your own renders cheers now